say that if Peggy Guggenheim herself had not existed, she would have to be invented. It was Peggy Guggenheim who gave Pollock his start in life, really as an international artist, by commissioning Muir in the summer of 1943. This painting was really meant to be his big world splash, where he announced uh, to everyone that he, he arrived. This was meant to be for her apartment in New York, so it had to fit into the hallway that she wanted to place it. And this hallway was uh, the entry point for everyone who visited Peggy Guggenheim, and so everyone from the art world would walk through this hallway and know who Jackson Pollock was. Peggy Guggenheim commissioned the picture and endorsed Pollock after Mondrian and Duchamp gave her the nudge and said, this guy's really good. And it was Duchamp who suggested uh, putting it on canvas rather than painting it directly on the wall, which was very, very smart. So what's interesting about the University of Iowa is that it really is sort of Greenwich Village West beginning in the 1930s. And this reputation that it has of a, sort of an avant-garde place for both writers and painters is established pretty early. Um, and a lot of this has to do with um, such factors as Iowa is one of the first places to open up a BFA and MFA program, series of BFA and MFA programs, um, such that I believe by the early 40s, it's producing more MFAs than any other university in the United States. Um, but it, uh, other factors include um, a couple of artists in residence at the University of Iowa, including Grant Wood and eventually Phil, Philip Guston. Grant Wood, a uh, uh, great native son of Iowa, born in Anamosa, Iowa, becomes a um, artist in residence at Iowa in 1934. Lester Longman, the new director of the School of Art, he had recently established the MFA and the BFA programs. The basis for the University of Iowa uh, was the employment of professional artists as professors. And he started working very energetically with New York gallery dealers, recognizing that in the summertime, New York galleries often closed their doors because it was hot, no air conditioning, nobody went to New York in the summertime, nobody bought art in the summertime, and Longman took advantage of that to essentially arrange for fairly large shipments of very cutting edge, brand new, modernist, abstract, international modernist art to come to the University of Iowa campus for what he called the Summer Contemporary Art Shows. So this famous Iowa program attracted Peggy Guggenheim. And when Peggy Guggenheim decided to move back to Europe in 1947, she was looking at institutions that shared her approach to art and artists. And Lester Longman was able to connect with her and convince her that the University of Iowa was the place to park a lot of her works. So she wrote to her friend Lester Longman and said, I'm shipping you a painting. I hope you would like it. You'll have to pay this shipment, but it's yours for free. It took a few more years for Pollock's Mural to arrive because the professors argued over the $40 shipping fee, but it eventually arrived. The works of art were given to the University of Iowa in the late 40s while they were still fresh, and in some cases while the paint was probably still wet, and it symbolized perhaps the new dawn of abstract expressionist art, both in the art program and in America. One way or another, Jackson Pollock is one of those artists like Picasso, Dali, Warhol, Monet, I mean, he's up in that league, isn't he? And as it happens, 2015 is a year of the Venice Arts Biennale. And so a particularly qualified audience will be coming through the city. And my assumption is they'll all come to see the Iowa mural. <laughs>